up of the recent reads that I finished. There are eight, so I will try to be uh, succinct and we'll see if it works. The first is The Rose Garden by Susanna Kearsley. This is a new favorite book. Brie Hill kept talking up Susanna Kearsley and I kept saying, I need to try her, I need to try her. And it kept not happening and finally I just did. I felt I, just the rose garden to me made me, it's just such a like bright cover made me think of summer. And um, for some reason also I just thought of her as like treat reads and I think of summertime as a time for those. Um, and it ended up, the writing felt a lot more literary than I thought it would. I heard before Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures say that it is like, uh, Susan and Kearsley's books are like the Outlander series, but just tamed down and less graphic. And that is kind of what I was wanting. I think, I don't know, you know, if I'll ever feel kind of up for um, reading the Outlander series, but I love the idea, which in The Rose Garden, um, this woman is going back uh, to a place that she spent her childhood. And while she's there, she ends up somehow something about the place uh, traveling back to uh, the 1700s in England and kind of she's switching back and forth between those two time periods. And this book uh, just slowly made me fall in love with it. I am used to being disappointed by many modern books. I am just such a lover of classics. And so I kept reading and thinking, all right, I'm waiting to be disappointed. I'm waiting to be disappointed. And I just kept loving it more and more. I loved the character development. I did really enjoy the romance and all of the historical details. It was just a really lovely story. I think perhaps Susanna Kearsley might be a new favorite author and very kindly Brie Hill then sent me uh, Mariana, which we are planning on reading in September and I can't wait. She said that actually her books all have kind of a simil similar formula, um, but I love the formula. So I think I'll be okay with that. Same thing with Mary Stewart. Hers all have a similar formula, but she still has variety within the formula. And so if you like it, you know, why knock it? And then a lovely friend, Joanna, sent me a beautiful copy of The Winter Sea. So I think I will save that for January when it's just very gloomy and you just feel kind of stuck inside all the time, which as a reader is not always a problem. Uh, anyhow, yes, so I am really looking forward to reading so much more Susanna Kearsley. Um, then a buddy read that I did with Kate from the novel Nomad was The Fleet Street Murders by Charles... Finch. I always get the detective and the author's names swapped. So the detective in the series though is Charles Lennox. And this is a Victorian um, historical mystery series uh, that kind of is somewhere between literary mystery and cozy. It has like the cozy atmosphere, but the writing is pretty pristine, like you see in more literary mysteries. Um, but I do tell people this is kind of everything I wanted out of a Sherlock Holmes, where it has more character development than Sherlock Holmes does. And the mysteries kind of are, uh, I don't know. Once I got to the end of many of the Sherlock Holmes stories, once I, you know, everything was revealed, I kind of went, huh. Like, you know, not, not really disappointed, but not really in awe, if that makes sense, just kind of underwhelmed. Uh, so yes, I do recommend this series and it was the third in the series and there's lots of personal developments as well. So of course, Kate and I cannot wait to get to the next one. Then continuing, continuing in the mystery vein of things was The Monster in the Box by Ruth Rendell. I finally read this. Um, so next I can read The Vault with Kate, which we're very excited because we read the prequel a few years ago. Anyhow, all to say, I read The Monster in the Box, which is the 22nd in the Inspector Wexford series, my favorite detective series ever. And uh, in this one, Inspector Wexford kind of has not forgotten about this guy who he thinks got off when he was guilty. He thinks he got away with the crime and it's always bothered him immensely. And then this man randomly just shows up again years later and Wexford still has a just an awful feeling about him. There's just something that just gives him the gives Wexford the creeps about him. 
Um, and then certain suspicious events are taking pl taking place again in the neighborhood. So, of course, that leads Wexford to believe that this man has something to do with it. Uh, as always, just I, I just love this series. I can't recommend it enough, especially for literary fiction lovers. And I loved, loved in this one, you got to find out how Wexford and his wife Dora met. And that was just really special. Uh, I felt like just so special, like I was in on the secret because you I had seen their marriage, which is a wonderful marriage throughout all of the books. And they just really do have uh, mutual respect and admiration for one another. And it's just I, I really love this series. So, yes, glad to be, um, you know, continuing on with it and we'll be sad when it's done. Then a reread that I did as a buddy read with the lovely Stephanie from That's What She Read is Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. So I talked about this briefly in um, some of the reading blogs that I put up. Uh, I just enjoyed this so much. By the end, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to, to be done just because it's so long. And um, reading Gone with the Wind over the course of a month still felt pretty busy. There was lots of reading. All that aside, though, this is a wonderful, wonderful novel. And if you can kind of realize, you know, there are these these characters are very flawed. It's a very um, what do I want to say? Kind of it can be very off putting to people, the time setting and how maybe like it can be romanticized and everything. But I do think if you can kind of set those hesitations aside, the actual meat of the story and the characters is fabulous and I think Rhett Butler is one of the best most complex complicated flawed men in all of literature he is a wonderful character I think even better than Scarlet I just found myself really um reassessing my views on many of the characters in this book and some characters that I didn't like as much the first time I liked a lot more this time some of the characters though that I did like more the first time I didn't like as much this time so yeah I just it is this book is the gift that keeps on giving and I will definitely reread it several you know many many times throughout my life so I highly recommend Gone with the Wind if you do like classics. Uh, then another mystery that I read was A Demon Summer by G.M. Mallier. And this is the fourth in the Max Tudor series where he is a former MI5 agent turned vicar. Not something you see every day. Uh, so I do really, um, I love this series. It is a little odd though that he is a priest who is in love with a Wiccan. So I, 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 don't, I don't know exactly like what kind of a priest he is, but regardless of that, it's still a really fun series that has all of the classic elements of a mystery. This one takes Max to a nunnery, an abbey, where he has to figure out there is a fruitcake that some are uh, think suspicion should be cast on that it had poison in it. So just so many like iconic, classic uh, elements to mysteries. So I do highly recommend this series. I know it's not for everybody and it's hard for me to explain what about it is off-putting to people, but it just has a certain sort of atmosphere about it. I don't know if it's maybe it's melodramatic. I'm not sure, but I just know it's very unique. If you read the first book and like this and like that one, you will like the series. But I think if you read the first one and you don't like it, you're not going to like the series. So I think that's a good litmus test for whether it's for you. Uh, then another one that I think might be a new favorite book is The Beast's Garden by Kate Forsyth. Um, Kate from the novel Nomad sent me this book for Christmas and it's ironic because the first video I ever saw from her was her reviewing The Beast's Garden. This is a combination historical fiction set in Nazi Germany and fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast and The Singing Lark. And this was a really hard read. It was a very emotionally taxing read, just this setting. Um, but it was an amazing story and Kate Worsight told it just so very well. Uh, it starts out where um, Ava is uh, separated from her family 
and kind of has no other options. And there is a uh, German officer who has been pursuing her and she has kind of been just push, putting him off because she hates, you know, that he's in the German army and just everything that the German army stands for. Um, but she has nowhere else to go. So she marries him. She barely knows him and she marries him. Um, and that's, you know, the very beginning of the story. And then you just see their knowledge of one another as people and their characters um, unfold throughout the rest of the war and kind of um, finding out who they truly are and what they're willing to sacrifice for what they believe in. Uh, so I really do recommend it. It was an excellent uh, Beauty and the Beast retelling. Sometimes um, I get a little uncomfortable with Beauty and the Beast retellings. I don't want this kind of unhealthy dynamic to be there of he's really flawed, but uh, and he does terrible things, but she's attracted to him. So it's okay. And this did not feel that way. It felt like a really healthy dynamic. And I, I really appreciated that. And that the female lead had agency. So yeah, all in all, a really healthy, well-rounded, but also um, all enveloping fairy tale retelling historical fiction. And I highly recommend it. Lastly, I finally got around to Jane Harper's The Dry. This is the first in the Aaron Falk mysteries. Now I know I said in one a recent mystery video that I was going to finish all of these um, mystery series before I started any new series. But at the time I put the dry on hold, I didn't realize it was going to be a series. So I just counted it as I, I'm just going to read this anyway. Um, and also I will say there's really something to realizing if it's not the right time to read a book. This came to me in June and I started to listen to it. And I just wasn't feeling it. And I thought, you know what? From everyone who's recommended it, I have really high expectations of this. Like the people who recommended it like really good books. So I think that this is not the right time and I don't want it to ruin my experience of it. So I returned it and put it on hold again right away because there were I knew there'd be many people in front of me. And then it came in the beginning of August and... I can't tell you how immensely I enjoyed this. This was a really interesting hybrid between murder mystery, crime thriller. It, you know, it, it was somewhere in that in that vein. It was a very sobering crime um, where there is a family that's found murdered. So that was really sobering, really hard. If you think, you know, that's too much for you, I definitely don't recommend this. But... Um, just the pacing of the story, the writing, the descriptions of the drought and the heat and kind of the claustrophobia in this town was fabulous. It was such a page turner. I absolutely loved it. I am going to wait for a little while and let that one sit with me before I um, put the next one in the series on hold. But all in all, I'm very excited about uh, that as a book and maybe finding some more Australian crime fiction. So yes, those are some recent reads and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you've read any of them and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.